The Enlightenment occurs from approximately 1720s to 1790s. It is a revolution in thinking. We can't understand the American Revolution without it. So think to yourself, how many of you want to improve yourself? Well, this idea is a new concept in history at that time. Before that, the Enlightenment farmer didn't expect to leave the social caste with they, which they were born into. The late 17th century idea that one can study and become more was brand new. It was a way of thinking about the natural world that is best understood through close human observation plus reliance on reason. Classic liberalism it contains several ideas. The idea of liberty, that individuals have human rights such as speech, religion, press, fair and equal treatment under the law. Equality, this both legal and of opportunity. So legal meaning that everyone, the law should apply everyone equally to everyone. And also that everyone should have an opportunity to do certain things. Human dignity, science, progress, and rationality leads to a better government and society for all was what they believed. They believed in representative government not a democracy. Those who owned the land were the ones that were representative. Some important thinkers included John Locke, who wrote the second treatise on civil government in 1690, and he said the mind is a blank slate formed by experience. Men set up a government to protect property, natural rights, and the right to rebellion. Baron de Montesquieu came up with the idea of checks and balances and separation of powers. Adam Smith wrote The Wealth of Nations in 1776 which became a foundation of modern economics and a free economy. Deism was a type of religion that had a naturalistic view of God. God created the universe, but then he stepped back, and reason took over revelation. It was largely rejected by traditional Christianity and the divinity of Jesus it also rejected. This part here is simply to help you understand what the Enlightenment was like, and two different individuals that you would not necessarily be required to know, but it's a good story that kind of illustrates to you the effect that the Enlightenment had on people in America. And so the first person is Benjamin Franklin, someone that we are familiar with. And he was raised in Puritan New England, in Boston specifically. His father wanted him to be a minister, but he couldn't afford to send him to Harvard for training. He learned a printing trade instead. He never felt like he fit into Puritan New England. And so he decided to study writers who were critical of Christianity, Deus, as an example. He was, his purpose was to read and prove them wrong. But as he read, he started to actually agree with their critiques. And he applied reason. And he came to the conclusion that Puritan Christianity was wrong. And so he rejected his own faith. He had problems with his brother as a well. Christianity... Um, his brother put boundaries on him that he wanted to escape from. He moves to Philadelphia and thrives there. He leaves with very little money and is taken in by a Quaker family and gets a job at a printing house. He goes to England for a while, starts a swimming school, invents flippers. At the age of 42, he is the wealthiest person in Philadelphia and the most well-known. He retires at the age of 42. He then pursues a life of industry, ambition, self-education, virtue, science, and politics. He strives to be morally perfect himself. So he has an American, and, and he is the quintessential man of American life. Philip Vickers Spithian was the son of a farmer. He had 100 acres of land in New Jersey. His family was Presbyterian. There was nothing exceptional, exceptional in his upbringing. He kept a work journal um, and talked about his very mundane activities. But at the end of each day, he read John Locke and some of the other Enlightenment thinkers. And he wrote a series of letters to his father at the age of 17, begging him to send him to school. He ends up going to an academy run by a Presbyterian minister that trains young men and women for two years, and then he goes to Princeton. It is scandalous because he is the oldest son who normally takes over the family business. So the idea was that they would sustain what the family had always done. So he's breaking with his family values of the time, just as Ben Franklin had broken with his family and what was expect expected of him. Princeton was the intellectual center of America, and he had his classmates included Aaron Burr and James Madison. He was supposed to have grown to have a gown to wear, but since he was a farmer, he didn't know that. So he didn't fit in necessarily. 
He will eventually become a Presbyterian minister, but sees his life as breaking away and improving himself. He is homesick and, and misses his family, but at the same time, he enjoys improving himself. He becomes a chaplain in war. And again, these are two men here that break with what is expected of them in life. And that is really what the Enlightenment is about, is becoming more than simply what fate tells you that you have to be. And so it goes with the ideas of self-improvement, that you can always be better. It's the first time in history that we have the idea of bettering one's condition. Again, Franklin rejects Puritanism. Fithian leaves the family business. It includes employing reason as a check to individual passions. You trained your mind to suppress the passions that get you into trouble. They didn't see themselves more as a citizen of the world, someone that has a universal love of the human race and not just part of a local community, but really part of humanity. Their historical view of progress. In medieval times, they looked at it of where does history end? There were lots of superstitions. The Enlightenment looks at the world instead as getting better, as solving social problems. In Europe, it was more secular, where America, it was still going on to an end where Christ returns. There is a fundamentally different worldview that requires conversations and compromise with deeply held Christian faith of the people, which will present a challenge. And if they can't explain miracles rationally, then they must not exist. So looking at the Enlightenment and religion, the colonies are mostly Protestant. Deism believes that God does not intervene. He does not answer prayers. He does not make miracles. He instead gave men the power to reason. And this will actually come into conflict with Puritan beliefs. The Puritans do study science, but they try to work it into conjunction with their faith. God saves people because he foresees good work will be done, not because they're predestined. Um, Thomas Jefferson did not um, believe in the divinity or the miracles, but thought Jesus was a great teacher. And so he actually takes and he cuts out those portions of the Bible that he can't rationally explain, which is what you see in this picture here. And he reads the Bible every night. Colleges are going to bridge the enlightenment with Christianity. And we are going to see several colleges that are going to be created, including Harvard, Yale, William and Mary, Princeton, Brown and Rutgers. They'll be focusing again on self-improvement and will always be tied to education. Ben Franklin will found the Library Company of Philadelphia to spread ideas. They will have weekly meetings, um, what are called juntos. Someone will present a paper and they will all discuss it. Education will be communal in nature. You learn, but then you discuss. You improve the mind through conversations. Reading will help one become cosmopolitan. The idea of learning a different culture is often seen as elitist because Native Americans, Blacks, were affected but seen as barbarian. Princeton will become the center of patriotism. This will also open education beyond just training the clergy. Dartmouth and Brown will be two examples of that. Franklin was an inventor. He never had a patent because he saw it as everything he did for a societal good. Knowledge was not beneficial unless it was used to make society better. America becomes a laboratory for development of useful knowledge, and service will be pursued for society and not for oneself. As far as politics, universal in nature, the all, idea that all humans have rights. Um, John Locke says political rights are given to you because you are human. Unlike the Puritans who say you have rights because you are an elect, someone that has saved. In Locke's time, this meant that white men, if religion made the Republic better, he supported it, um, regardless of which religion it was. They had to reconcile the Puritan idea that self-improvement was a sin. The ambition was selfish then, but not today. Advances in science, art, the greater religious freedom set the ground for the American governing system.